To irrigate a urinary catheter, first review the patient's medical record to verify the irrigation method. Then determine which solution is to be used and in what amount. After performing hand hygiene and ensuring privacy, introduce yourself to the patient. Then identify him using two identifiers. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Becky. I'll be the nurse working with you today. Hi, Becky. Hi. Can I go ahead and see your armband? Can you tell me your name and date of birth? Derek Portman, 122951. Okay, thank you. Lower the patient into a supine position. I'm just going to gently press and palpate to make sure nothing is hurting or distended in your bladder. Okay. Then palpate the patient's bladder for distension and tenderness. Does that feel okay? Yeah, it's been better. I'm going to go ahead and raise your head back up. Okay. I'm just going to check your Foley bag. Check the color, amount, and clarity of the urine. Look for mucus, clots, and sediment. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get the supplies for your irrigation. I'll be back in just a few minutes. Okay. Okay. Before you begin the irrigation, organize the supplies you'll need for the type of procedure ordered. That we'll we be using for your irrigation. Raise the bed to a comfortable working height. Expose the junction of the urinary catheter and the drainage tubing and put on gloves. Then remove the catheter from the securement device. To irrigate a closed catheter, hang a bag of irrigating solution on the IV pole. This is the tubing we'll be using. Using aseptic technique, insert the tip of the sterile irrigation tubing into the designated port on the bag of irrigation solution. Squeeze the drip chamber to fill it halfway. To open the tubing completely and displace the air inside it, release the clamp and allow the solution to fill the tubing. Make sure you keep the end of the tubing sterile. Close the clamp once the tubing is full. Using aseptic technique, securely connect the tubing to the patient's urinary catheter. Adjust the clamp on the irrigation tubing to start the flow of solution into the bladder. If the provider has specified the volume, calculate the drip rate and use the roller clamp to adjust it. If the urine is bright red or contains blood clots, increase the irrigation rate until the drainage turns pink. Follow the provider's order or your agency's protocol to determine the specific rate. Even if the urine is normal, keep an eye on the outflow of fluid and empty the drainage bag as needed. Goggles or other PPE may be worn when emptying the drainage bag. I'm going to go ahead and irrigate your catheter. Okay. Are you doing okay? Okay. Yeah. All right. For a closed, intermittent irrigation, you'll begin by pouring the prescribed amount of sterile irrigating solution into a sterile container. Continue to use aseptic technique as you draw the prescribed volume of irrigant, usually 30 to 50 milliliters, into a needleless irrigation syringe. Then replace the sterile cap on the tip of the syringe. Okay. 
Use a screw clamp or rubber band to close off the catheter tubing below the soft injection port. Next, clean the catheter or specimen port with an antiseptic swab. Remove the sterile cap. Use a twisting motion to insert the tip of the needleless syringe into the port. Then inject the solution using slow, even pressure. Remove the syringe and recap the port with a new catheter plug. and free the tubing from the clamp or rubber band. Allow the solution to drain into the urine collection bag. Some medicated irrigants must dwell in the bladder for an extended length of time. During this period, the tubing must remain clamped and the catheter cannot be left unattended. For open catheter irrigation, you'll need to follow strict aseptic techniques. Open the sterile irrigation tray. Pour the required amount of sterile solution into the sterile container and replace the cap on the solution bottle. Slip a sterile drape under the patient's catheter. Aspirate the prescribed volume of irrigating solution, usually 30 milliliters, into the syringe. Rest the syringe in the sterile solution container until you're ready to use it. Move the sterile collection basin close to the patient's thighs. Apply sterile gloves if required by agency policy. Use the antiseptic wipe to clean the connection point between the catheter and the drainage tubing. Then disconnect the catheter from the tubing, allowing the urine in the tubing to flow into the sterile collection basin. Cover the open end of the drainage tubing with a protective sterile cap and coil the tubing on top of the bed with the end resting on the sterile drape. Next, insert the tip of the syringe into the catheter lumen and gently push the plunger to instill the solution. Do not force the irrigation. Remove the syringe, lower the catheter, and allow the solution to drain into the basin. The amount of drainage should be equal to or greater than the amount of fluid instilled. If ordered, repeat the irrigation until the drainage is free of clots and sediment. When you're finished, remove the protective cap, clean the end of the tubing with an antiseptic wipe, and reinsert the tubing into the catheter lumen. Use the securement device to anchor the catheter to the patient's leg. Remove and discard your gloves. Help her into a safe and comfortable position, lowering the height of the bed and raising the side rails for safety if necessary. Can I get you anything else right now? I'm fine. Okay, if you do need anything, go ahead and push the call light and we'll come back. Okay. Put on clean gloves and dispose of your contaminated supplies. Remove your gloves and perform hand hygiene. Document irrigation method, amount of and type of irrigation solution, characteristics and amount of output, and how well the patient tolerated the procedure.